string theory. Um, so we wanted to look at kind of the system that we were, you were just seeing in a GIF there. Um, like it was a standing wave that was formed in water uh, in a petri dish that we had glued on to a uh, speaker. And it was, you know, showed some cool behavior, so we wanted to look more into that. I did this kind of nothing to do with string theory. It's just what we call the lab because of, it's not string theory really, but <laughs> what we're doing is we're studying a wave that we formed in the dish here with the water, and we're using the single generator to vibrate the speaker at different frequencies and then study what we record with the camera. So. Um, so this is just kind of what we saw, uh, and I'll show a video too, which is really neat. Um, it's got some neat stuff, you know? Yes. This is all very slow. So that's kind of the first part of our system, um, and then you can see that all of a sudden the frequency changes, and then it gets really disordered. I don't know if that's that easy to see. And I think it happens that the first part where the wave spreads outward like a circle, that's it's like initially initially coming in contact with the water. And then when the wave gets all chaotic, it's when the it hits the edge and begins interfering with the edge and also itself. The disorder looks really ordered. Yeah, it, it does. Got him. It's just what we've been calling it. I don't really know what to describe the state okay. as, but so I would like to, yeah, if we can see it, you can see here that like the frequency is pretty high, but the wavelength is really low, and then in a second, it'll shift from like this kind of behavior all of a sudden to doing that, where you can see that the wavelength is now very high in the frequency. This is a higher amplitude too, we think. So yeah. 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 Uh, what are the experimental conditions here? Had this just started as the movie started, or what? Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Well, so you're telling me that there's a shift. I don't know if you've been filming for 20 seconds before this or if you turned on the amplifier at the oh. shift. What were you changing? Uh, so we had the amplifier set all the way down to zero, um, started the recording, and then it started to slowly turn it up. And so you're turning it up continuously through this? Yeah. Oh, that's important to note. Yeah. Although the period looking at here with the circle waves going outward, that lasts for less than a second. Yeah, it really doesn't, that transition that's happening in here does not take very long. Um, yeah. If you'd never turned it up, would it make that transition? Never, if you, if you turn it on at all, it happens. It goes to that transition and then it goes to the next day we saw. It remains that way. So you did sometimes leave it at a low volume, because it might be a volume dependent uh, threshold. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. I don't think you ever changed volume. We did, that was what the turning up. That would change frequency. Okay. Whatever. We'll go back here. Let's go back. There. Cool. Wait, no, no. Ah. I noticed that when um, it hits the edge, it does like a. Maybe the, the edge of the dish, is that a fixed thing, or is it a. I think it's open. It's an open thing? Yeah. So does the way to do a phase change? There is a phase change. Okay, never mind. Yeah, so um, we did some really quick calculations, and we thought that the um, wave would be traveling at the speed of sound in water, which is a thousand. So we tried to like visually analyze there are 12 waves across the dish, and how long the dish is, and we had to solve for one wavelength. And then we used the speaker frequency to solve for the speed of sound, but we must be doing something wrong here, because that's not what the speed of sound in water is, or so we thought. I really thought we'd like go backwards and try and find out the frequency of the water's firing out was, but we don't know what's going on because the system here is a standing wave in the dish. So, what well, can I look at that for a second? What was yeah, that frequency? Uh, two hundred nine thousand five hundred fifteen point seven. Point seven. Point seven. That's very frequent. Yeah. <laughs> that, that does not seem correct. But we realized they were using like, the wrong kind of math for it. Yeah, we think so. Uh, so we came up with this um, string approximation method, which is why we named it string theory, uh, uh, where we kind of we tried to see if we could uh, look at the water as if it were a large uh, string that were vibrating with an end and creating a um, standing wave at the end. It's just kind of a stretch. 
it is really stretching. So, you know, after some calculations we did. Well, they're showing all the stuff with tension. Oh, yeah. So we, um, this was really weird. So we tried to, we, we thought about, like, how would all of the water be in a um, So we thought about, like, the surface of the water as being, like, a string uh, with some tension on it, like, a, as a surface tension, right? Because you're going to vibrate it, so it's got to, you know, have something. Uh, and so we, uh, multiplied the surface tension of water at 25 degrees Celsius by the uh, diameter of the plate. Um, and then we did uh, this, this math here. Um, it got 7.21 meters per second. That's the speed of our wind. Thing is, that's still not close to what we thought the speed of sound and water would be, so. We're, yeah. And then we did some more calculations. And we. Um, we, here we're doing um, uh, frequency times wavelength to get velocity. We tried to find the period wave using video analysis and <coughs> with varying results. Yeah, we got very small, small numbers. And we tried to graph that. And it just did not work. Wait, what's that data point up top? This guy? The other ones all agree. Yeah, what's yeah except for that one. Can, can you go back to that previous table? You had a you had a calculation for speed of the wave that seems remarkably consistent. Yeah. Like it's in between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. Uh huh. Yeah. I might have put a data point in your one. I don't think so. Was what did you graph again? Is it? I graphed um, frequency versus wave. I'm gonna just put one in all. Yeah, probably. Oh, well. What should the graph of frequency versus wavelength look like? Uh, it should be inverse. Right. Because, you know, what is the frequency, what is it, frequency times wavelength equals velocity? That's yeah. what we said? Yeah. So you should be able to linearize that by inversing wavelength. Sure. Okay. Well, just, so we just put a linear fit on like that. But, okay. Um, we took the slope from this graph that probably isn't totally great, but, uh, and got about 0.1421, which I think is definitely wrong now, uh, and got about 98% error. Um, but if it was 0 0.01 or 0 0.02, which is what the, our data was indicating, um, it still would have been like 99% error. Uh, so the conclusion that we kind of came to was that this approximation that we've done is likely not correct, or if we're just really uh, bad at taking accurate data, or we're just not analyzing the system correctly. It was a little tricky to do video analysis with this, um, the water, because it's, I know using the film, it's hard to tell from above sometimes when there are peaks and when there are valleys. So collection can be a little tricky. Yeah. Even uh, if we had like a good setup and a good quality of video. I think in the future, we should have like different colored lights at different angles, so that when you're looking at the uh, the waves that are happening on the plate, they reflect differently, and you can kind of see that pattern a little bit better. Um, and definitely, like, if we had a camera that had uh, could take higher quality video, um, still at those speeds, it would I think work a lot better too, because the video was pretty grainy. It's also possible that the waves traveling at the speed of sound and water, and then our, that would throw us a lot off, so maybe we did get the right answer, but we don't really know. Because apparently water waves have both longitudinal and transverse components in them. Yeah, and we just didn't know how to handle that. Thank you. <laughs> we have time for one question. Why didn't you do the oil? Water was cool. Okay. I'm sorry I can't conform our indie lab to your expectations of who I am and what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> you bought fancy oil. We Look, did, yeah. Maybe I'll try it again in the future, right? No. Whoa. The internet is frightened. <laughs> That's right, internet. <laughs>